both Jack and I are working with the cameras taking stills so that we can effectively piece them together, make a time lapse, but not show the guys at work. So it's going to look like it just opens up. To get the skin off, it doesn't easily peel off like like a glove does. So our skin is attached to everything underneath by all these extra little bits of soft tissue layers. So you go along lots of little incisions and the whole thing will effectively come off like a, well, like a bodysuit. And if you cut us open, you get a lot of this stuff. This stuff here is the fat. But if you look in cross section, there's just a really fine little layer just under. So you've got the skin, very thin layer, and then fat, and straight under, that's the muscle. They're ambush hunters, they lay in wait, they pounce out, and it's all with this. But look at this muscle. This goes from right up here where the knee, kneecaps are. Beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful right form. down here. And this is just strong, tough muscle here. Yeah. People talk about retractile claws. They're not retractile claws. So it basically pushes them out when it needs it, which is when it's climbing or when it's grappling hold of prey. Normally, in a relaxed state, the tendons hold it there, and then it, there's a tendon underneath that pulls it out and it is projected forwards. It's a very neat mechanism. The last bit is taking this whole skin off via the head, and George is going around actually cutting around the ears. The skin has to be done as, as perfectly as possible, so you cut around the base of the ears, and then the whole thing comes off. Up here with the neck muscles and the jaw muscles, they look very pronounced. You can sort of see that here, you sort of go along, it's all very graceful, sort of gracile, very streamlined, like an F1 car, and you get to here and it's just like a Land Rover, it's just yeah. massive, chunky, right. solid neck, solid muscles here, that's where all the, yeah. so the, business, the end. business end, yeah. So you don't want too much muscle on the important locomotion bits, because it would require too much energy to move those limbs about. But obviously when you're killing prey, you've got to have a bit of muscle there and a bit of uh, power, or else you're not going to subdue the prey and you're not going to be able to kill it. So what you're holding there is the temporalis muscle, and that's the one that allows us to open and close our mouths. And ours isn't very big, we haven't got a huge amount of bite force, but without even knowing anything about this animal, you can tell that it's got huge bite force and a huge potential to chew. So George has cut all the way down the throat, the trachea, the larynx, right up to the base of the tongue, under the jaw. And this thing popped out. This is the tiger's tongue. They look like they're hair-like structures, but they're keratinized, just to really reinforce just how tough they are. I dissected lots of primates, but I've never dissected big cats before. It's just nice to see where things fit. It's very cool for biologists. So we're just taking out all the abdominal organs. You've got the stomach, you've got the liver, you've got the large intestine, the small intestine, the kidneys will be at the back somewhere. It's this big dark organ here that's hanging over all the other organs in the, the abdomen. This is the liver. Uh, really important for breaking down foods, for dispersing toxins, the sorting factory of the, of the body effectively. What we've got here, is a lovely layer of connective tissue and it's really vascularized, which means there's lots of blood vessels in there, lots of arteries, lots of veins, even down to capillaries. If you hold it up to the light, which is lovely. As yeah. your stomach, if you open it up, you will see there's probably still its last meal on the floor. Oh, there's a big chunk of meat in there somewhere. So this is partly decomposed, her last meal, her last supper, sadly. <laughs> So we've measured the intestines and they were 8.29 metres long, which seems a lot. Is that average for a tiger, do you think? Or is that, was yeah, that's, that's average. I would say anything between 7.5 and 9.5 and 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 metres, that is. Average. Really? Huh. Science in action. So as George is cutting away the uh, diaphragm, you can see up into the chest and you can just see the heart. That is a lovely big heart. And that's exactly what you need if you need to pump blood through as you're chasing down prey. The heart and the area surrounding it is like Clapham Junction. You've got everything coming into this one central hub. It's like the busiest part of the body. So you've got this lovely elastic walled artery, and that's the aorta. It's the biggest artery in the body. And it's 
elastic like because it needs to stay open. That's because they've got really high pressure oxygenated blood being pumped all around the body, from the whiskers down to the toes. It's, it's going everywhere. And next to it, you've got the main vein in anybody, that's the, the vena cava. And as you cut the heart in half, you can see the different ventricles, the different chambers. I'll let George do the chopping. We talk about the heart being just a muscle, and we sort of don't quite understand when we say that just how complex it really is. Not only has it got this massively thick wall for the, the oxygenated side, the thin wall for the, the deoxygenated side, it's got these amazing chambers, the two ventricles here and the, or the two atria at the top. But you think all this blood coming in at high pressure and squeezing out and squeezing, how does it not backflow on each other? Nature is awesome. It's got these special little adapted valves here. So it's one part there one part there and one part there. And it's called a tricuspid valve. So if the whole thing's curled around, it's like three little pockets. Mm. So as the blood all flows in, it can't flow back again. It stops backflow. When the whole thing's closed, you've got these lovely little pieces holding it all together. In the same way that a parachute is kept open with the strings and the strut, the whole thing is kept in perfect working order. Mm.